to this uh, video I'm now doing. Um, it's a request by uh, Mr. Blue Fifty Five N who requested on the, my channel um, how to use a ballistic program and create a drop chart. Um, this guide is just a basic guide so through some of the elements you uh, need to put in data wise into a ballistics program. I'm going to use the Burger Ballistics one because that's very good and it sort of more or less shows you everything I want to show you. You'll notice one subject, one part of the uh, equation I don't touch is weather. So um, be wary of that, that the weather set as default in there will be different to what you use and also elevation. So just be wary of that because that will uh, confuse things. So I'm just trying to keep this basic. But just, just follow the video and if you've got any questions please come back to me. Thank you. There's uh, one or two bits of equipment you're going to need. Um, you're going to need a chronograph to get your feet per second. And also you're going to need um, some either bullet data for your bullet desired choice. So you can get the ballistic coefficients. And you're going to need a dial caliper just to do a measurement between your scoop and your centre line of bore. Um, but apart from that, uh, the video will explain what you need to do. Right, one of the other p inputs we're going to have to do is um, find the distance between the reticle crosshairs, that's the centre of the crosshairs, to the centre of the bore, which is the measurement between these two points, and then measure it in inches with a dull caliper or um, whatever. Right, I'm out with the rifle now. Uh, this is the uh, drop sheet I'll be working on load up for. Um, so what I need to do is get an average f uh, feet per second velocity. So how I'll go about doing that is uh, taking eight or nine shots through a chronograph, and uh, after each shot I'll write down the uh, various feet per second measurement. And then what I'll do is I'll take however many shots I have and divide them by themselves, and that should give me an average. Um, once we get to the ballistic calculator, I'll need this figure because um, what we what the calculator will work out is how fast our bullet will be doing at a certain range, down range, and from that point, and with the ballistic coefficient number, it'll be able to tell us what drop we uh, are ex experiencing with gravity, and that w uh, the, the uh, calculator will then tell us what figure we need to uh, put into our site, how we dial it in to compensate for the drop. So um, that's what the the feet per second is needed for. Uh, we'll move on now to the next part of the system. The next part of the process is to find the uh, ballistic coefficient number for the bullet. I've just gone onto the burger site here and you can see in the um, technical data they give you for the each bullet. In this case we're looking at flat base bullets. Um, G1BC is the figure we're looking at. That's that um, is is the form factor for flat base bullets. Um, you can get G1 figures for um, VLD bullets and bullets with uh, boot tails, but they're not as accurate as the um, form factor of M, which in their case would be a G7 ballistic coefficient figure. Um, the difference between G1 and G7 is um, the type of bullet that the coefficients are worked on and compared against. In G1 they're for flat base and that would be compared against a standard flat base bullet and as I say with G7 figures um, they are designed for VLD and bullets with a um, boot tail. Um, adversely you couldn't, uh, you can't get uh, G7 numbers for flat base bullets because obviously they aren't flat base so you'd use a G1 for flat base and G7 for boot tail or VLDs or um, any sort of match tail a match bullet that has a boot tail um, design. Right, um, having worked out all the uh, inputs we're going to need to uh, actually produce a drop table, you'll need a ballistics program. Uh, as I'm on the computer doing this, I'll uh, use this one. This is the Burger Bullets one, and it's available on uh, their website. I'll put the address up in my comments, or I'll put a little flash up on the film in a minute. Anyway. So you've got all your uh, all your inputs that were worked out your FPS and your ballistic coefficient, and uh, you can see where these little arrows are now pointing on to this uh, chart. You'll need to put the relevant data in. You will need to so if you're using a G1 ballistic coefficient, you need to change it to G1, or if you're using a G7, you need to change it to a G7 because they are different figures. 
Um, once you put in all the data, um, there's a little option on the right where you can show how uh, what multiples you want each uh, drop shown, i.g. 25 yards, 50 yards, 75 or 100. And on the extreme right, you can uh, say whether you want inches to show your drop or your MOA. Once you put in your data, you hit the white scroll bar where it says um, calculate and then you get this little drop chart. Um, on the extreme left, you'll see a, the first column is a set of figures running down, down to sort of 1200 or whatever you want. And that'll be the distance you're shooting. And then on the extreme right, that'll be uh, the wind um, uh, click for your, the windage for your site. So in your, in the inputs up top, you can put in like for 10 mile an hour coming from 3 o'clock or 6 o'clock, 22 mile an hour. And in the third column, you can see, that's the third column from the left, you can see your MOA drops. Um, as I selected MOA, so that'll be shown as MOA. And this, this is the um, figure you need to dial into your site or your t um, uh, your elevation on your scoop if you're shooting at range. So if you're shooting at 400 yards, you'd look across 400 yards and, s and just scroll across to the relevant figure and then dial it in from your zero. Um, your zero will be, for if for argument's sake, will be 100 yards, that will be zero on MOA. So you don't need to add any elevation to hit at 100 yards. So basically that's what you'll do. You can, uh, using this program, you can actually copy and highlight, or copy and paste, three, four rows or whatever, and then print them out onto a bit of card and laminate them. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute and what you'll end up with. But this is the ballistics uh um, calculate a program and you can uh, it's very good really and that's very accurate um, so it's as accurate as the information you put in so taking care to get all your inputs and then you'll get decent results so that's that bit of it uh, well move on right so we're finally in the finishing stages now um, with these drop charts what I've done is um, I just copy and pasted uh, into something like Excel or something um, the information I want and the information of the actual load the drop chart has been designed for um, I've then printed that on a bit of card and I've actually laminated it up so it, you know it'll be weatherproof for if you're shooting out in all weathers in the rain and that at least you've got a drop chart with you uh, you can also make a smaller one and uh, stiff stick it to your scoop um, I've done another th uh, video on this which I'll link this one to but that'll explain how to do that side of it so that's basically it really, um, we've gone through the process of getting all the data, verifying the data and then adding it, uh, putting it into a, um, a ballistics calculator to get the drops and then printing off a sheet. So um, that's the drop charts and that's how you do them. Thank you. Right, we've got to the final end of this now. Um, one thing that you must be aware of about this data is um, if you get s something slightly wrong in your figures, the further you go out, the more deviation in and I error you'll find that will be more magnified. Um, what you're best to do is go out into the field uh, and what we call check everything in real time shooting. So if, you, if you've if got a shot out to 500 yards, put target up at 500 and shoot it with the dial in and the uh, drop it gives you and then measure it and make sure that that drop chart is correct. Um, it's not so bad target shooting, but if you're shooting live stuff, that's the difference between wounding and killing something, and wounding is not what we're all about, especially at long range. Um, but real-time data to verify all your figures is most important. That's about it. Enjoy.